Hi, Leslie. Hey, Lynn. How's it going? Good. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks. Hi, good evening. Hello. Good evening. Yeah, I'll give them a couple more minutes. For some reason, it's not letting me download the agenda. Hmm. Did you go on the town website? I'm just doing it through your email. Oh, there it is. All right, there's a bunch of us on here. I think most everybody's here. So we'll call the meeting to order at 7.02. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, Hi. So uh, first order of business is to approve the minutes of our October 2nd special meeting. Can I have a motion for that, please? Motion to approve minutes of previous special meeting. Second. Second. Can I, uh, any discussion? All, right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. okay. I'm sorry, who, who seconded the motion? Connie. Connie. Um, Lynn, before we go any further, can I just say that um, I realized today there was an error on the agenda notice for the last meeting. It had the wrong meeting date on the agenda. I do apologize for that. So that's no, not Oops. funny. It's an error on my part. Yeah. Um, so the minutes that we approved at that meeting would have to be approved again. Um, obviously not at this meeting because they're not listed on there, but at another time. Okay. All right. And then... Um, 
you know, just the, we, there were no other decisions made. There was just conversation, but um, just so everybody's aware of that. Okay. Thank you. None of us caught that. Um, all right. So discussion on the Halloween, um, as if you saw my email, you saw that David Schreiber said that we could have um, whatever we decide to do over at Club Getaway. So I just gave, I just sent out that email so everybody could think of how they like that idea. Um, if you do what we could do over there, blah, blah, blah. So um, anybody have anything to say about that? I did not hear back from um, John Casey or uh, Jim Daly from CAMA. I, so I thought it was a great, um, I thought it was a great offer. And if we're still considering, I haven't been to Club Gateway in a while. I used to play tennis there, but um, if we're still considering something car based, it seems like that could be done there. Um, but I'd be curious to see what you're thinking, Lynn. That's kind of what I was thinking. If we, you know, um, people can drive in and then they can go around the loop and then go back out. Um, Are you talking about the loop, the lower parking lot? No, I'm talking about going up to the top and all the way around. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, if we can get something that big, I don't know. Uh, if, like I said, I think if we could have between five and 10 stations for what we're doing the timing, that would have to be sufficient. And there can be, you know, lights or you can always run away from our stations and run around the, well, not don't, don't go in front of the cars, but, um, you know, go alongside of them, whatever it can, it can be done up. Lynn, I think given that no one else has responded to you that, you know, we should probably do it nope. yeah. the place and just, you know, move on to actually planning a great event there. I agree. So um, with that being said, thank you, Connie. I'm excited that he said yes. <laughs> um, what he also said is that he would prefer it on a Friday night, either the Friday night, like the 25th weekend or the 30th. Um, because obviously the 31st is Halloween and the weekend before he said uh, he's doing some Airbnbs. So he has a fairly rowdy group coming in on the Saturday of the weekend before. And <laughs> he's just not sure how well that would go around with people driving around and they may add to the character of the show, but um, that was just his recommendation. So. Uh, what do you guys think is a date the, the night before Halloween or the Friday before Halloween? If we the Friday before Halloween, the night before gives us an extra week to plan. The 30th, the Friday, the 30th. Yeah. I'm I, that works with me. Okay. I think that's much better. That's, that I think it's a good location when there, there are other people. Um, so, Connie, I know that you said the land trust would do a station. Yes. And uh, Darlene, are you Lions Club? I, I certainly can ask the Lions Club. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Or but we um, can. Um. Another thing that came up, I was talking to Diane, who's the director down at Pratt Nature Center. And I said, just for ha ha's, you know, I know you guys are busy, you got your plates full, but this is what we're doing. If you want to have a station or something just for, um, you know, advertisement or whatever. And she said that the New Milford grad party is looking for something like that to do, but they are looking for a fundraiser. And I said, it's through park and rec. So it's not really a fundraiser. Um, I said, maybe they could, be zombies with a change bucket or something i don't know so she was going to put them in touch with me and we could talk to them and i'll see exactly what they're looking for um that would just require a few of them if they wanted to come up and just do it and advertise for it or how, i don't know i'll wait for them to contact me but that is something that was brought up 
give us a dollar or we'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> I think we should think about if we want to have an out of town of, yeah. you know, entity soliciting right. money when our own high school has. So, um, Nothing. so yeah. That's um, another person to maybe reach out to would be, um, is it the, uh, Buckby? who oversees yeah, 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 yeah. the hayride yep. one in New Milford because they're not doing that? Yes, Billy's okay. on my list to call. Okay. Um, if they don't want to do anything, maybe they have props and stuff that we right. can borrow. Exactly. Um, again, a station I don't think will take a lot of people, depending on how big you want and scary you want to make it. Um, but yes, thank you. He is on my list. And I'm going to write, i um, not sure who the best person for the chamber to write to. Is that a lease or somebody else and see if they can put out a townwide email through their email list and see if anybody wants to do anything. Um, we, Lynn, you and I could draft something and, and then send it to um, Lynn Sternweiss who sends out to the chamber. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I picked up my friend was giving away a free cardboard coffin unused. <laughs> so I got that. Um, we have lots of black plastic that we can hang up as backgrounds if we need it. And I think up there at the club, there's from buildings to trees, there's plenty of things to tie to. Um, so um, I think, does anybody not know it? You Well, even if you don't know it, I mean, even if you do know it, uh, David said we were welcome to come over and and look and you know as well as we do know it it may be good to just go over and look at exactly what is there and get a better idea or for me anyway start getting ideas in my head um, I can set up a, a meeting with him or just drive through or something or if anybody wants to drive through at their own free time or whatever to take a look and get some better ideas just refresh it in your head um, yeah, I mean, how how long is the the trek? It's is it well, it, it'll fit it'll fit twelve stations. You think? Yeah. Problem. Yeah, yeah. There, you could have both sides of the road, of the driveway, and they're okay. going to go up and and there's a a loop in the driveway and they're just going to come back down the same way they went. Okay. Um, I think one car at a time. So like the event bright um we could do that and set up the time you know set up the time slots um i don't know how we want to do that so lynn i i think for um you know for their own uh convenience that it might make sense to do like a site visit if we can find a time that works you know for mm -hmm. our group and uh i did you get a sense does he have Airbnb is there like every weekend this fall or you know is there is there a time that might work better for him for us to go over there um, I mean my, my one of the thoughts that I just had while you were mentioning queuing up for this is that uh, it might be a good idea to get people off the road I uh, you know if if they come early so you know depending on the layout and whether or not it works you know maybe the parking area could be like a staging and uh you know you'd have volunteers just you know just kind of managing and making sure that people like stay in line or whatever but mm -hmm. uh, i don't know whether that'll work you know we kind of have to i think we do have to go over there and imagine it yeah um, so i think david's pretty open i don't think he's doing a lot of airbnb business just that he is doing it um if we were to drive over there I'm pretty sure even if we said, hey, David, we're going to come over this time, he'd be cool with that. He was, he was very open with it. Um, he was actually, you know, pretty excited about it. He has nobody there to help or do anything. Uh, the electricity is on until I believe the fall or like and water and stuff is on until the following weekend. The first weekend in November, I think he said so, because I had mentioned doing it even after Halloween. And he said, just be aware that these things are turned off then. Not that we're going to, I don't think we'll need water or anything.
Well, I, th I think we should go during the daytime um, if we're going to do something like that mm -hmm. uh, so that we can see it. I, you know, it, it would be my inclination to, uh, to park and walk uh, if we, you know, I, it, we're not a large group and we could probably, you know, wear masks and, uh, you know, in case we came within six feet, but otherwise just spread out. Uh, but I think that that, I think that going there would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to contact David tomorrow just to see what's, you know, if he has any preference for when we come or if we just need to call first. Sure. Okay, I'll do that and then I can email everybody. Okay. I mean, he, like I said, he seemed really open. I would guess he's gonna say whenever because there's, you know, he has no workers, he has no visitors and just a few people hanging around, but I don't think it's during the week. I think it's on the weekends. But yes, that would be convenient. It would be good. I can do that. Okay. Do we have a time that we're thinking of for this event? Um, for me personally, I have to leave to get Chase Monday through Thursday at, oh, probably uh, tomorrow doesn't work for me. Thursday, I just have to leave by 2.30. And then I'm back by 3.30 and Friday I'm open all day. I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry, Lynn. I was, I was talking about the event itself. Oh, <laughs> sorry. sorry. I remember the meeting. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll, I'll get some broad times from David and then send that out. So I didn't know what the thinking was about when the, this would be. And um, is there a weather plan? Um, weather plan we could decide because maybe we could do it Sunday night the day after or even the following weekend like I said because we don't really need water and I, I don't think he said he was setting down electricity just the water um, but we can confirm that uh, at this time I have no weather plans daylight saving time just so we is on uh, November 1st which might affect the timing of it if it were another time. Um, so, yeah. So, like six to eight, maybe? Six to nine, depending on how much interest we get? Yeah, that makes sense. That's good it'll start be, by then, right? Yeah, it'll be dark. Yeah. Yeah, because on Halloween, I think we're usually out by five or 5.30, and it's still kind of light out. Yes, that usually is. Are you, Lynn, are you envisioning people driving up and kind of stopping at each station in the car? Momentarily, there should be no reason why they have to stop and necessarily like watch a little gig or something. Um, you know, they may stop and check out the scene better. That's one thing we'll have to do is see how long once we at the <laughs> towards the end or once we know all the stations that we have and we kind of have to figure out how long we'll think it'll we think it'll take everybody to drive through so that we can make an appropriate time slot on the um, invitations okay or on the event rate sign up or whatever we do. Mm -hmm. And I think because because it's so narrow there, it's kind of a one at a time thing. Do we want to do one station ourselves as park and rec? We'll do a whole bunch as park and rec. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was gonna say if there, yeah, okay. Um, I have some cardboard cutouts. Michael's really good at eating brains. Him and Maria <laughs> are really good at eating brains. It's true. <laughs> I have a couple of these. They're like life size. It's oh, cool. It's it guy. Oh, nice. I usually put, put it on my front porch, but I have a, accidentally ended up with like four of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if anybody donate anything, we can do to live stations, but we can have some props and stations as well. 
Yeah. Um, I have that uh, werewolf scary dude that I bought, and he's seven feet tall. Really creepy. Um, he could make up his own thing, you know, maybe with like a little werewolf that out at people thing, a little like my kid. <laughs> um, I can talk to the, the boy scout, but actually probably not because most of them are at private school and can't leave campus. Um, yeah, I would have to come up with some ideas. Whoever, you know, don't even, they're asking if you, I mean, don't asking us if you, there's a group that would do it, just go ahead and ask them. If we can get, if we can get 10, I would be happy. If we can get more than 10, that would be great. As many as we can get and make it fun and really scary. Do you want to put something out on Facebook just in case there are residents that have um, inflatable things or, or decorations that can be borrowed that just might be readily available? Mm -hmm. And I, I did want to put something out um, sooner rather than later for that reason and so people can get excited about it and um, you know, ask for volunteers. I got a couple last year by doing that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes other people have, you know, great ideas and that we're not in touch with. So yeah. I, Leslie, what do you think about that? I think that works. Um, you know, just we need to solidify a date and and a time frame just so we can let people know and when do we want to hear from people by. Um, to help with the thing, then that would just need them as soon as possible. Well, that's all the thoughts in my head right now. Anybody else? Why don't we ask people to commit, like, depending on how quickly you get it out, why don't you ask them to commit by October 10th? And then, you know, at least you'll have your, like, core group and then you know, you can add on people as the month goes on um, if it really takes off. But that way we're not like hanging out waiting, you know, because you are going to need um, volunteers that will be like road monitors and, you know, like there'll be people who are in addition to the, um, right. to the agents that you're going to need. So, um, so hopefully, you know, you get a few of those and then I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe the 12th, 13th, I, you know, maybe it's, it's, the 10th is awfully close, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I just, I just I think know what you mean. <laughs> acceptable to like keep adding on people, but to expect to have, you know, to give people a pretty quick turnaround deadline so that you have your core group. Okay. Or I mean, we, I'm in it with you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we have to get into the community house to look at what we have and what we can use over there. So I can um, go over and meet you and bring the stuff outside so you can see and or I'll give permission for you to come in with me. <laughs> okay. Uh, are we going to be giving... Are we going to be giving out candy? Uh, I don't know about that because that's another thing to add on. If if somebody wants to take that on, fine. Um, I think I was talking about making up goodie bags, but or we had talked about it. I think. Um, I I don't think that would work. You know. Well, we know how many sign up, but not like how many kids or how many bags or, and it would get very expensive. Do you have a candy idea? No, I just, I just know the uh, appreciation for candy at Halloween. That's all. No, I, <laughs> I um, uh, no, I was just curious. I'm, you know, obviously I'm new to all this, so I'm just trying to get a sense of, you know, the vision no, or whatever. Yeah, and normally at the Boo Bash, we did give out a whole bunch of junk food and stuff. Right, Leslie, didn't they get candy there? We had pizza. Yeah, they, and pizza. Yeah, pizza. Um, 
I, I think if we, for safety and stuff, I think if we just stick with the drive-through for that event, mm -hmm. that's, that's good. I agree. Anybody have anything else they want to add? We got our mission now. What, what, what are we calling this event? Uh, Terror at Camp Getaway, Club Getaway. <laughs> we have to parade of horrors. <laughs> We'll have to give that a minute's thought. Well, let, yeah, think about that. And then have we decided on the day? Are we going the day before Halloween or? I think the 30th is the best. Anyone agree, disagree? Agree. As you say, they must all agree. No agree, reason. agree. Okay. <laughs> All right, so it looks like Friday, October 30th, from six to eight or nine, we can always extend it if we get lots of signups. Um, and whatever catchy name we come up with. I mean, Haunted Trail, everybody, excuse me, everybody uses. Maybe we should say like Haunted <laughs> drive through or something, so they know it's gonna be a drive through something with drive through in it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stay in your car. <laughs> want to Stay in your car or die. <laughs> we could have all sorts of crazy don't, stuff. Don't get out of your car and keep your mask on. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only time I'm wearing a mask. I was trying to think of a way that the stations could each give out candy, but it just I guess it just doesn't work. There's really no way to do it. It would be nice if they could, you know, you could say, okay, you have four kids in the car. Here's four little mini whatever, but you can't, I guess you can't do it. There's just no way. It would be easier if you were going to do something at the very end, like just give one time. A yeah. Bag as they left or something like Quarantine that. Quarantine candy. Yeah. Be packaged and then left on their own for like, you know, a week or something like that. So you could sort of say, you know, these have not been touched, you know, now take one uh maybe but I, I to have each of the stations give out candy um is probably too hard for us to control for just trying to put it at the end if we somehow had the can quarantine candy and then there was somebody <laughs> in charge of a, there's a little ramp and the person drives up and you they let four bags go down or something i i, I can't i can't think of a way to do it though that would be easy to set up. You've got about three weeks to figure it out. <laughs> well, think about it. I mean, they do drive through McDonald's, but it's just a question of, I mean, it would be very easy to have the candy quarantined and not touch it and then only touch it with gloves the night of after like letting it sit for a week. But how do you communicate that to people that this is not, so if someone ends up with COVID in a week, they're not like, it was from that candy I got, you know? <laughs> well, the candy is positive for COVID. <laughs> that does bring up a point though, with the concerts, with the outdoor concerts, we used a waiver and the language of the waiver does say, you know, we have put in place precautions to keep you safe. At the same time, you acknowledge that we can't absolutely keep you safe. And so you acknowledge that you take a risk by participating in this event and you have the participants sign the waiver as part of their registration, which as an attorney, I would recommend that you do. Not that it's legally enforceable, but it just sends home that message of, you know, it, you could, there are so many ways and we don't know and we can't control like when and where you might pick up COVID. So this is right. what we're doing you know, but you are assuming a risk by coming here. Right, and maybe they could, if they have to register, they could forego the candy at the end if they wanna just keep on driving. They could, they could. And uh, trick-and-treating households, like private citizens are making up these elaborate things with like PVC tubing or pipes or whatever. They're, they're 
devising creative fun ways to deliver candy to kids that keeps them six feet apart. So I think that we could think about it, like not rule it out um, and just see what we come up with. Yeah. I agree. Something to, to work on, yeah. Any other questions? I like that idea, PVC pipe with a big basin at the bottom that you drive up to the basin and the candy comes down. You have to test it out to make sure that your favorite candy makes it through the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure you grab it and make sure that they unwrap easily and you can get it in your mouth okay. <laughs> you have to test all of those things. <laughs> My father used to test ours, I remember. He would be sitting in his chair downstairs and we'd have to, all five of us would have to bring our bags to him and he'd say, I have to go through these and make sure that they're not poison or anything. And he would take like a couple out of each bag. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anyway, the good old days. Parenting yeah. 101. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually in the lesson book, right? It is. <laughs> So, right. Lynn, I, you know, I'm on, I chair a commission, so I am well schooled in, you know, some of the intricacies of trying to plan when you have a meeting structure. Is there, is there an opportunity for us to build a wiki document or to share ideas without commenting on them while we're planning? Uh, um, Darlene could help us with those rules and Leslie, if we, if we attach our emails to the agenda or any communications we have, doesn't that qualify? Darlene, Leslie. Well, I don't know. Sorry, what yeah. was that? <laughs> um, Connie was just talking about, you know, communicating without actually meeting for little notes and things like that. So if we have an email thread, as long as it's made public, such as attaching it to the agenda for the next meeting, isn't that acceptable or no? Uh, yeah. Um. Darlene, I think it would, I'm just looking for your masterful thoughts. I always, I always happen to be the one that always happens to have to say no. Okay. Right, because you're really no. conducting. And I really, now. I'm, and that's why I always, I always feel like it's <laughs> a bummer to have me on any type of subcommittee, because guess what? I, <laughs> yeah. Say, you got smart and average no. So, yeah. you know, any type of correspondence, whether it's email and or um, between a unified group, which this subcommittee is, then qualifies as a meeting, you know, in, in its simplest form or as its formal form. So, um, would need to be warned. And yeah, I just, um, but that does not mean that the chairperson cannot put out information. It just should not be responded to. Okay. So you can take that for however you'd like to take that and utilize it as such. So Lynn, if you wanted to say, here's a weekly update I'm providing, mm -hmm. or I heard from David, just wanted you to know, and then nobody responds to it. That is okay. probably the most discreet type of communication. Okay. You know, but don't any type of back and forth, even if it's in a forum of a, a document, is communication. So okay. Sorry. I can I can remove myself from the committee. No, please don't. <laughs> there you it's go. Very helpful, we value your expertise. But there you go. So I guess that means if anybody has anything they want to say to email me and I will put it in an update. Yeah. You know, and just 
Try All to right. use it in very generic statement when you're doing your update. Okay. Not so and so told me, so I told them, and so and so told me, so I told them. Okay. So we're just to to reiterate, we're waiting on the like saying something on Facebook to try to get, um, people you know groups that can do stations and then also volunteers. We'll probably need a, a few extra volunteers. Um, you know, than just just us, um, like they're saying to for the check in, um, some directional people, some um, and a lot of the directional people can just be ghosts and goblins, or we could have signs up, uh, things like that. I don't know. I haven't done this before. Okay, but about pe what about get, get, getting? Um getting group getting people you know groups like the lions club that's gonna that are gonna do stations what about that we're get, did you want to did you want to ask on facebook about that also or just by word of mouth uh so darlene is going to talk to the lions club but i think and we have the land trust through connie um i think the uh leslie and i are going to make up something to send to the chamber so they can put okay. out an email blast that's going to be the, the blast from the chamber okay yeah and we'll okay. put it on facebook asking for people who want to you know again groups who want to do a station and individual volunteers okay and i will reach out to billy buckby because he did the he's um in charge of harry Brook park and they have the awesome haunted trail every year but they're not doing it this year okay so he may oh, okay. have a group that wants to come up, you know, and, and put something together. Um, again, that's out of town. So I don't know how y'all feel about that, but maybe we can at least use him for, um, props. Okay. All right. So what do you guys think? Should we ask Harry Brook Park to do something or just ask him for props? If we're not gonna ask, if we're not gonna go with the grad party kids, if they wanted to do something with us, I was just suggesting possibly to see if there were any props available that he wasn't that were in use. Um, I think we have to just be careful about, like Leslie already mentioned, um, involving too many outside organizations. Um, mm -hmm. We don't want to start being unfair to how did we open this up then to other organizations and if we didn't so um, yeah. and then also the residents of other towns yeah right okay um are we charging for this usually we charge five dollars a person to get into the boo bash and that includes the haunted house and everything upstairs i would like this I would like to suggest that there not be a charge. I think that due to the year that it is, that if we can offer a community activity to the families, um, that, you know, if it becomes that there are expenses that need to be looked at, that maybe the park and rec can't undertake, that maybe there'd be another way that we can see if we can cover those expenses. I'd like to see that we could offer this to the community this year, especially. I think and, that's, I like that. In, in addition to that, um, at the Boo Bash, we buy all the pizzas and there's drinks and there's right. um, the pumpkins for decorating and there is a lot more. Uh, yeah. not, that the, not that we don't spend money on the Haunted Trail, but the money we were collecting, I think, excuse me, was more to cover lots of the pizza and the drinks. Mm -hmm. We can, that's why I have to go see, go into the community house and see what we got and see what we need. Because I forget already. We got a bunch of stuff in there. Yeah, we have quite a bit of stuff in there. trying to picture it and um, this is going to be a little bit different because they have to be kind of bigger 
I think like I, I have a little I made a little house that the um, that fell on the witch you know and the witch's legs were sticking out from Wizard of Oz and there was monkeys all over it and stuff so um, like we could almost do that again with one of the cat well I don't know that one's not man so it's just a matter of uh, making it big enough to see from your car. Right. You think maybe we, would mm -hmm. Dan Greenbaum help us out, do you think? Probably. He's a lion, so wait. We get to ask him first. Dude, <laughs> ask him though. He would, you know, he oh. would likely get into i'm already picturing him in his superhero costume that he <laughs> had one year yeah yeah fine. so i'm hoping so anybody actually i don't anybody who can get him obviously we want him so no, no it's great that he's a lion because you yeah. can kind of you know pull him right in yeah. yeah and he would do more we know dan they get so excited about halloween so yeah yeah they do as much as they can um okay lynn if it's helpful i can forward you that waiver information and uh we had we had language that was for people attending as well as people volunteering which you know we might want to think about i don't know uh you know gene if if i mean it seems like it could take some time for people to look over all of that so maybe it might make sense to get started early okay um Put Leslie on that email too, please. Mm -hmm. Get the paperwork and we can look that over together. Um, do we have anything else we missing? They want to add? I just didn't want to not mention and just only because um, last week we did talk about the the glow in the dark um, necklaces and putting out a letter. I, kn I know that we've kind of talked about the 30th, but just to make sure, are we still on track to, I know that I saw that Instagram that the chamber put something out about Halloween still being on and, you know, um, do it on your own as far as, I forget mm -hmm. their wording, but I just wanted to make sure that the park and rec was still on track for doing something like that to the school as the minutes reflected. So I did have a conversation with the first selectman because she, um, Jean, I believe is going to be sending out a s statement um, about Halloween guidance. Yeah, it was going to go in the, in, sorry, I thought I was on mute. Um, it was going to go in the newsletter that's due to go out Monday, just with the CDC um, guidance, just to, you know, tell folks to stay safe and here's the you know the recommended guidance and is it going to support the glow-in-the-dark necklaces and possibly utilizing safety you know via the resident trooper or um i'm not sure how we would i worry about handing out the glow necklaces on main street okay. um Leslie and I had talked about seeing if we could um, schedule it so that it coincided with, um, like, do it, filter it through the school. So have, um, because so many parents are now picking up and dropping off, um, doing it either right after morning drop off or right before drop off and have kind of like we did for Easter and have a table at the front of the town hall and folks can come drive through for the hour after normal school drop off or i wonder then though if you would get all of the trick-or-treaters that way because Number. there are a lot of trick-or-treaters that come that aren't kent, or, kent center school so mm -hmm. i just i mean you know if there were some sort of a liability concern about handing out necklaces because you would be too close uh you know or it would cause a, a backlog or a line or anything like that on main street i mean one one option really still would be to uh 
pair up with a merchant that planned on um, doing, or or more than one, frankly, mm. that planned on doing um, trick or treating, and have the necklaces available for handout, you know, mm -hmm. as part of the treat. Mm -hmm. um, that way, you know, even kids from out of town who come, which there are, you know, undoubtedly going to be a few, um, will be able to get a necklace, which the main, right. you know, it, it's not, that's not a treat. That's a safety uh, measure. Sure. To the parents, to the kids, it's a treat. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But I mean, the, the purpose of our handing it out is not, you know, as a goodie. It's, um, you know, the, the public purpose that that serves from Park and Rec has always been to make kids more visible on Halloween. And so if we really wanted to reach the broadest number of people, you know, we'd want to think about how, you know, we could either get them out that night at a safe place or maybe engage the merchants to help us um, distribute them. Yeah, Leslie and I can work on like getting a hold of the chamber and getting them distributed out and then getting a list out to the public on where they can um, pick up necklaces. Yeah, I am worried about, a, you know, sort of congregate. That's always a, a point of congregation at, you know, at the old, the old firehouse where they usually get handed out. Um, and just to keep people moving and, you know, congregating less is better. But yeah, we can certainly work with the chamber to have pickup points or um, something of that sort. So maybe then the newsletter would just mention the Park and Rec's, you know, endorsement of that yeah. safety protocol and the provision of the necklaces. Yeah. And we have to, um, Andrew's off that day, so we'll have to get a, um, you know, an overtime trooper for that time frame. Do we own the necklaces or do we have to get them? We buy them every year. It's a couple hundred dollars, two or three hundred dollars. No, I was just wondering if we, if you had like a back, like a supply of them. Or yeah, no, because we, we, we hand them all out, so we don't. Yeah. They don't generally last very long, even before they're activated. I was just going to suggest, I was going to, get some or offer to get some just because I feel like the lesson I've learned through COVID is that when t and as soon as you have an idea, five million other people have the same idea. <laughs> That's so <for> sure. <laughs> I, uh, I was thinking better sooner than later, we get our hands on some glow necklaces. I, I can place an order tomorrow. So, and actually I'll call just to make sure that they can be here in time. What about throwing them all over the Falcon field? And let the kids get them. Someone would end up with five and someone would end up with none. <laughs> and kids would tackle each other to get the same one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is very close. <laughs> Too close for comfort. <laughs> It'd be like the bouquet getting thrown at the wedding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'd have to make sure that they just get one or parents would have to, I don't know. They could just run out and grab one and nobody would have to touch. Or we wing them out there and the kids have to run after them and go get it one at a time. <laughs> oh no, then they have to stand in line. Okay, never mind. <laughs> and the fire department is also doing, having an activity. So they would be another source for handing thing, you know, handing out necklaces as well. And maybe so, we can get them to do a station. That would be super cool. Scary firemen. Right. I bet yeah. that would take all just one simple phone call and a question. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, My I brother used to do one in our firehouse in Weston where we all grew up and my sisters and I went back after he goaded us for like three Halloweens in a row please, please, please come to our haunted house. My two adult sisters and I screamed bloody murder through the entire thing. <laughs> yeah. They enjoyed that at the fire department. Last year, the three local moms, we scared more than the kids. <laughs> 
and I think Heather like Peter Pants. So I think we did good. <laughs> At least she screamed she did anyway. <laughs> well, I think this is a great solution that will bring a lot of smiles to the community. I'm very excited. Me too. I love to scare them. As soon as you guys have a flyer or, you know, if you're creating a, you know, Facebook post or whatever, let me know and we can cross market it through the town Facebook. Darlene also is an admin on there so we can make sure that it, you know, pops up in as many places as possible. All righty. Anybody else have anything they want to say, add in ideas? Um, Eventbrite will need help with and welcome help with a flyer. Okay. Um, Michael, since you're the Eventbrite pro, is that something we can ask yeah, you I to can do set, with? Sure, I can set something up before the next meeting. Okay. Um, if there's nothing else to discuss on this matter, we can set our next meeting. How long does everybody need? So it's Tuesday. Um, do you want to wait? Do you want to do something this week again or wait until Monday? Is Monday too far? Monday's a holiday. Let's no. see. Let's see if we can get over to um, Club Getaway and then maybe meet after that. Yeah, good idea. Okay. All right, Leslie. So we'll wait for you to talk to David. Yes, I can and actually then. email him this evening. Okay. Um, or I can call him tomorrow too. I have his, I can text him or whatever. Yeah, I have his contact too. So if okay. 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 that will. All right, so we'll wait to hear from Leslie to schedule our next date, which we can do right after or soon after we have the meeting or at the club and go from there. Um, In the meantime, sorry. reach out to your I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, that so if the group is going as a group to club getaway, that would constitute a meeting. That would have to be warned. Okay, we still need to talk to David. Yeah. Um. So why don't we set up a date that works for everybody and then see if that works for David. Because by the time you talk to him and everything and get back to us, it, we could lose a couple days there as opposed to throwing out times to him. Right. Absolutely true. Um, and if we're going to go during daylight hours, you know, what time? could that be that would work for everybody? Um, noon works good for me, except this week. <laughs> it depends on the day. Friday? I'm flexible. I can do Friday. Friday. I can yeah, I can definitely say that I can, whether we go together or by ourselves, like I can definitely commit to getting over there before end of day Friday. Do you know what I mean? Um, I'm not available midday Friday. I have to leave Kent by like 1145 and should be back by 230. We can plan around that Friday will work. I can do earlier than 1145 or after 230, but not too late, you know, so as long as it was between 230 and say 430. So um, how about Friday at 330? Does that, that work for, for me? Yeah, That's actually fine, Friday man. morning doesn't work for me, but Friday afternoon does. Okay, that works for me. All right, and hopefully he'll agree with that. <laughs> Okay. Can you say 3.30? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That gives an hour before Connie's got to... Is that enough time? It should be enough yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, 
you know, maybe three would be better if if it works for everyone though. And uh, otherwise, I think an hour is plenty of time. Three yes, three works for me. Three should work. All right, so three o'clock on Friday. We'll wait for Leslie to confirm that with uh, David. All right, anything else yeah. anybody wants to add before we say goodbye? We're all good then. So let's adjourn the meeting at 7.54. And hopefully we will see you all on. Um, one more question though, actually, before we adjourn the meeting. If we're gonna, if we're gonna see David or see the property on Friday afternoon, do we wanna have a meeting Friday night? I can't. Okay. Um, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't meet if you didn't want to. I mean, if you wanted to, I just, I just can't be there. Okay. We could just meet right after we check out Club Getaway. So I'll go sit in a field somewhere. All right. Um, yeah, I guess we could do that. So talk while we're there since it's already a meeting. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'll put site visit and um, discussion, I guess. Although uh, I'm not sure what that does for the public. Not that anybody's come to the meetings, but um, might be better suited. Not that we want to have another meeting, but. Well, at the site, there will be discussion. Yes, just by the nature of the visit, so yes. Right. Um. Somebody wants All to call the it formality stuff with the meetings because of the public, because the public has to be invited. Is that what that, okay, I wondered. Yeah, because yes. I just. It's all like Freedom of Information Act stuff. Okay. And it's just hard because now COVID has actually put a whole nother layer into it because based on governors, executive orders were supposed to be holding all meetings via electronically so that those who are not comfortable with coming out have the ability and the accessibility to attend meetings. But it, there's really um, a lot of difficulty in, and it's, you know, we're calling this a sidewalk, but especially even on the planning and zoning side and all of those who they need those type of functions to be able mm -hmm. to move forward in their type of meetings. And they're still trying to figure it out, you know, um, and trying to find a way on how to handle it um, with still giving access to the public, so. Right, yeah, it's hard. It is hard. Well, we could set up a Zoom meeting and one of us walks around with our phone. Yep. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's exact, but truly, Mm -hmm. You're right. You're 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 absolutely right in that suggestion. In that, then you're on record of just identifying this was the intent of the meeting. I think most of it's all going to come out as far as the intent of transparency. You know, doing the best you can to your community to promote transparency. So that's not a bad suggestion. You know, then you're on record. Mm -hmm. so that's all. I don't want to give our secrets away. <laughs> this is going to be dressed as the werewolf. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we could go individually, but it kind of defeats the purpose and it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot more people coming through at all different times that oh my God, you know, it would be January before we, <laughs> <laughs> why don't we just record it on somebody's phone? I mean, you know, if a member of the public was that interested that they wanted to watch that crazy footage and try to hear it, then, you know, they would get something out of it. Um, you know, That's all then, it is. Exactly. That's just showing intent that there was nothing happening 
you know, whatever that might be. <laughs> yeah, especially with this topic, so. Okay. Okay. Um, so hopefully we'll see everybody Friday if, if that works out. Okay. Um, so we can, everybody good? Anyone else need to comment, ask question, idea, anything before we go? Oh, Lynn, I'll be in touch with you tomorrow. Okay. Last chance. All right. We'll adjourn the meeting at 7.59. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Have a great night. You we'll too. see you Friday. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.